Because Marcus certainly will. Yes. yes, this is my dreadful moment. Not all of you know, but I used to work for Marcus. And what Marcus knows is my biggest fear was is that I would disappoint him. And I'm so honored that he's asked me to be his best woman, and I'm very proud to even say best man. <laughs> and my fear today still is is I'll disappoint him. So I'm going to try my best, Marcus. <laughs> it's a wonderful honor to stand before a room full of interested and intended people and to talk in tribute of a man of achievement, of flawless integrity. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, no, 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 you gotta give me that. <laughs> Penetrating <laughs> intellect. <laughs> Penetrating intellect, okay. Penetrating intellect. And a flora, flawless character. Yep. Unfortunately, now I have to talk about Marcus. <laughs> in thinking about my speech, one of the my mom's calling. <laughs> in thinking about the speech, what I wanted to share with you were the first weeks that I met Marcus, because they really left a mark, as I'm sure that they've left a mark on all of you. I was working at Merrill Lynch at the time, and I was there before he was. And all of a sudden, there was this whirlwind that showed up in my office, and I've been trying to describe, to figure out how I'm going to describe this. It's like a tornado, a hurricane. It's this force that comes through, and you're like, what just happened? <coughs> but then you kind of sit back, and you look at the person, and it's Marcus. <laughs> and Marcus has more influence on me, and he's going to hate this, because he really made me part of the person of who I am today. Me as a person and me as a professional in the industry. And it's all because of you that I am who I am. And I really appreciate and it's really an honor for me to stand up here today. So I thank you, Marcus. You're welcome. <laughs> Get on. <laughs> How many times have I told you, stop stalling? I need, <laughs> the, I need the card eventually. <laughs> But I'm going to need that in the Have future. You all know that it is very easy to piss on Marcus. <laughs> this is a very easy thing to do. But I felt what my duty was today was to show you a side of Marcus that, that many of you have not seen that I've been very fortunate to know. And he's going to hate me for this. <laughs> and he knows this part. He knows I'm going to talk about these, because he just knows me. I was very blessed to have a son. However, when my son was born, he was 24 weeks and one pound, and he was not expected to live. He had to be taken by C-section. And after four days of eating hospital food, I called up Marcus, and I said, will you please bring me General Chow's chicken? <laughs> it was the best Chinese food, and I was just dying for it. And I called him, and he was all the way down at the World Financial Center of Wall Street, and I was at 186 to 168th Street, and he got the food, and I don't know how many different subways he had to get on, and he did it, and he brought me General Chow's chicken. <laughs> and obviously, I haven't forgotten it. And now I'm going to embarrass him again. <laughs> there was a day where I took my mother in to have a colonoscopy. And I was not prepared to hear that my mother had cancer. And the doctor came out with a personality like Marcus. I have something to tell you! <laughs> Just like Marcus would. Except what I didn't expect to hear is that my mother had cancer. And the doctor explained everything to me. And I was all by myself. And the doctor left, and I said, who can I talk to because I needed to talk to someone. That person was Marcus. And Marcus got me through that day. Because what the doctor did not want me to do was tell my mother, because she had an anxiety issue, 
and they were afraid for me to even talk to her and they wanted me to even pretend like I didn't even know that she had cancer. And he got me through that day so I could prepare myself to be with my mother. And I thank you, Marcus, for that. The good news is his mom is fine. Yeah. So I don't all, don't all want you to feel sad, but yeah. he got me through that day. But to get to the more... Yeah. Yeah. Let's hear it for Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted Let's you to know that there are some very tender moments that Marcus can share, but he's not normally willing to share them. But very deep down, he's a very, very special, sensitive person. Was the chicken any good, though? <laughs> now, I was working in New York, and Marcus was working in London, and I found out that they had a very special phrase for Marcus, and they have a little nickname for you, and they called you Tigger. <laughs> so I thought it would be very appropriate to read this. The wonderful thing about Marcus is Marcus is a wonderful thing. <laughs> His top is made of rubber, and his bottom is made of springs. He's bouncy, trouncy, flancy, bouncy, fun, 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 fun. But the most wonderful thing about Marcus is that he's the only one. <laughs> now, when Marcus and I were marketing, there was a famous phrase he used to use, but most of you don't know it because I was with him when he was marketing. And one of the things that he used to always love to say is, show me the money. <laughs> and it comes from a very special movie, which is called Jerry Maguire. But there's also another line that comes from that movie that I think is very special between Marcus and Tamsin. And that is a line that he uses, and I know it may sound a little cliche, but I think it's very appropriate, is that you complete me. And Marcus Tamsin does complete you. Tamsin is a wonderful, bright, talented, special, sensitive individual that I've really come to love. And I'm very honored that she's welcomed me into <coughs> your relationship. So I want to raise our glasses today and I have to include Bob and Pointy, because they're not here today, which are their cats, and wish them a very happy, healthy, loving, and healthy marriage. Here's tomorrow.